Hello, welcome back to the CPTSD Book Club. I'm Allison, your host. <laughs> I wish I was Jeff Probst. He's the best host. Anyways, today we're talking about The Body Keeps the Score, specifically about the brain. So it's the brain, mind, and body and the healing of trauma. We're talking about the brain and what the brain, what happens inside the brain when you experience trauma and when you re-experience trauma, when you're triggered and you have a flashback or an emotional flashback, which subtly and pervasively become a lot of our daily lives. Like we're just triggered subconsciously and our brain's activated in these ways that I'm about to tell you. I had a massive breakthrough when I read this. I'm about to tell you what it is as I tell you what three parts of the brain are activated or deactivated during and when you're re-experiencing trauma. Alrighty, let's get into it. Actually first, before jumping into things, if you would be so kind to subscribe to this channel if you have not already. Subscribing and watching are the best ways to support my channel and I would so appreciate it. If you're watching, thank you, but if you haven't already, just subscribe. It'd be the best gift that you could give me today. Make my day. Come on, do it. Thank you. Okay, now jumping into the video. The three parts of the brain affected by trauma. The first one, no one's surprised about, is the amygdala. The amygdala is a part of your limbic system in your brain and it is activated by intense emotions, either positive emotions or negative emotions. People more so associate the amygdala with negative intense emotions because the amygdala also is what warns us that there is impending danger around, that there's a threat around, and therefore it activates your stress response, which is releasing a bunch of a lot of hormones and nerve impulses into the body that prepares you for fight or flight, which raises your heart rate, raises your blood pressure, raises your oxygen intake, you breathe faster, you get prepared. You get prepared for fighting danger. So this all makes sense during trauma, during your traumatic experience. But what's weird is it happens when you're triggered. What's interesting about this during triggers and flashbacks is the threat is not present. Your brain has associated something in your life, something in your present with your trauma, with this response. And so even if you're just having a memory, you have your eyes closed, you're in your room, say, like me right now, you're safe. If you have a memory, this stress response is going to happen. The amygdala is going to be activated. So when we're healing trauma, why the brain is important is because we can have talk therapy all we want, but there needs to be some level of desensitization, I think, or at least awareness of the fact that not only is our mind having to heal, there's a whole physiological brain experience that's happening that's unconscious. It's like almost beyond our control if we don't like bring conscious awareness and healing to it. So moving on to the second part of the brain that is deactivated. This one's deactivated. It is your Broca's area. So this is another one that people have heard of. There's some parts of the brain that people are like, what? And I heard about that one. But the Broca's area is um, used for speech production. What's interesting about this is I mean, how often have you felt just unable to communicate what you're experiencing, what you're feeling? Over time, we find words for the events that took place, for the trauma that has taken place and the healing, all the stuff, but the inner experience leaves us kind of speechless. How can you describe to someone this response, all of the stress hormones inside of you and your raised tension all the time, like subtly, pervasively, throughout your day to day. How can you explain it to someone? It's so hard because trauma by nature drives us to the edge of comprehension. These feelings are almost impossible to articulate. And let me tell you, it is because the part of our brain responsible for articulating for producing speech, for translating our feelings and our perceptions into words is deactivated. 
mind blown is your mind blown because I was I read that and I was like whoa that makes a lot of sense and then they also shared this that I want to share with you Shakespeare wrote in Macbeth after the murdered king's body is discovered the person who discovers it says oh horror 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 sorry oh horror tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee confusion now hath made his masterpiece i mean oh, you can't describe you can't describe some things i don't know i personally really struggle sometimes to articulate my feelings and like when i feel triggered my brain goes blank i lose my words i lose my ability to communicate and it's just when i'm talking like people in authority like and not even like in authority like a parent of my friend i used to just not be able to be myself because this area just like deactivated because parents were a trigger for me it triggered this stress and this deactivation of this part of my brain weird okay and then the third part of your brain that is activated is the Broadman's area 19. This region in the visual cortex, sorry, this region, um, this is a region in the visual cortex that registers images when they first enter the brain. So when you're taking things in, this part of your brain is activated, but when you're re-experiencing your trauma, when you're not taking in images, but instead you're re-experiencing the trauma. This part of your brain is activated as if the trauma is actually happening, as if you're actually registering it as happening in the present moment. Going further into how we are not present, instead the trauma is feeling like it's present. Your whole left side of your brain is deactivated. I have tried to explain this a couple times and I'm just gonna give up and read to you guys part of this passage, okay? Deactivation of the left hemisphere has a direct impact on the capacity to organize experience into logical sequences and to translate our shifting feelings and perceptions into words. The Broca's area is on the left hemisphere. Without sequencing, we can't identify cause and effect, grasp the long-term effects of our actions, or create coherent plans for the future. When something reminds traumatized people of the past, their right brain reacts as if the traumatic event were happening in the present. But because their left brain is not working very well, they may not be aware that they are re-experiencing and reenacting the past. They are just furious, terrified, enraged, ashamed, or frozen. After the emotional storm passes, they may look for something or somebody to blame for it. They behaved the way they did because you were 10 minutes late, or because you burned the potatoes, or because you never listened to me. Of course, most of us have done this from time to time, but when we cool down, we hopefully can admit to our mistake. Trauma interferes with this kind of awareness, and over time... <sighs> How crazy is that, guys? We lose the ability to determine cause and effect, what actually triggered us. We lose the ability to grasp the long-term effects of our actions, of blaming, of lashing out at our loved ones. We lose the ability to keep our long-term goals in mind when we're triggered. So this is really interesting. Another thing mentioned is that the stress hormones of traumatized people take much longer to return to baseline and spike quickly and disproportionately in response to mildly stressful stimuli relative to ordinary folk who aren't traumatized. The effects of constantly elevated stress hormones include memory and attention problems, irritability, and sleep disorders. They also contribute to many long-term health issues depending on which body system is most vulnerable in particular individuals. Okay, and then the last thing that I will mention is that something that they cannot find on like neural imaging, but that is a response to trauma, is complete denial. So it's, I guess, more so in the mind than the brain. What's interesting is when your mind is in denial, 
your brain is still reacting in these ways. Your amygdala is still firing, your bogus area shuts off, your Brodmann's area lights up as if you're experiencing it again. However, your mind is like, nope, this isn't happening. Everything is fine. <laughs> so he mentions this and it was just a really big insight for me because something that like I'm desensitized to, <laughs> I'm in denial of, is that I mean, especially over the last year, there were a lot of upsetting things happening in my family. Every day there was just a bad thing happening that I would absorb and then my mind would be like, okay, you know, think about it a little bit and do what I could to handle it. But my brain was activating in all these ways and it physiologically made me feel depressed. Like, I don't know, my mind was in a way in denial about how stressed out I was about it, but clearly my body was like feeling the effects because there were so many mornings and complete days when I just did not want to get out of bed and I just wanted to eat or I wanted to not eat, I wanted to drink, I wanted, I don't know, I like, I was having all of these responses like these body responses and I was like gosh why like Allison get yourself together like get out of bed feel more better come on I know you have hard stuff happening but like I don't know there was like my mind was in denial about it but clearly my brain and my body were not in denial they were experiencing it so uh, anywho that was like a big note and then also I just love the insight about how your Broca's area is deactivated because I am speechless often. You guys don't see that part of me because I'm always talking here. <laughs> but I mean, in my day to day life, like, there's a lot of times when, like, just like, I'll be quiet. And I think, like, I just radiate the energy, like, please don't talk to me. I don't want to talk. I don't have the words. I'm experiencing something. Or like when I'm in a conversation with someone and I'm just like, mm -hmm. and I love, like, I like to say I'm a good listener and that's one of my strengths, but there's also a part of that where it's like, I'm not that great at communicating sometimes my feelings, my experiences, because I think this is like a really personally, I think it's like a really big thing for me. Like I just, I completely lose my words, complete. I have nothing to say and then that stresses me out. I'm like people please are like I want to have something to say I want to be like fun have a part of this like I want to have a conversation with you I just can't <laughs> but okay it's now been 25 minutes my camera is about to shut off I'll show you Lucy real fast before leaving hi Lucy babe okay it just shut off on me but we hope that you are having a swell day and that you're doing okay and that you really liked this video again um, I didn't mention it at the beginning of the video but I do have notes on this book, in-depth, extensive notes on my website. So I'll link that below, check them out if you like reading. If not, I try to share a lot of information in this video and I'll try to share more and more as time goes on in all the videos. So stay tuned, subscribe. I gotta, gotta burp, gotta, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Thanks for watching you guys, I love you, I really do.